Welcome to Not Quite Therapy. We're with Marty Weaver, the author of uh, Fallen World, a post-apocalyptic tale. She's going to get take a couple of minutes and tell us about it. Hi. Um, yeah, Fallen World takes place, you know, just a couple years in the future. Um, the story is um, a result of a worldwide virus that kills off about 90% of the world population. And um, it's the, basically the story of a small group of people in East Texas and a army sergeant um, that they they have their own parts of the story first and then eventually they do get together and it's a, a story of survival and it's a story of how um, these this group of people um, kind of stand up against uh, the United Global Order and their military force um, trying to stay free trying to keep up the spirit of, of America and, and basically the freedom of people in the world um, so it's It, it's, it's a story of how they, they basically fight for their freedoms. Uh, which is very relevant in today's society. So I think your greatest people influence. Will very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, I would have to say, you know, both of my parents were, but my dad was my number one influence ever in my life. He was an awesome Okay, you said your dad was your greatest influence? Yes, he was. Um, he had taught all of us, you know, things for us to, to, to fix our cars and, and stuff. He used to take us primitive camping and taught us how to, to do things. I mean, he, you know, he was a successful man in, in, in his job and everything, but his family always came first. And, you know, even you know, so my dad, I mean, I always strove to, to make, make, him know how much I, I loved him and appreciated him. That sounds wonderful. My dad made sure uh, we knew how. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, well, you know, being as, um, you know, I'm at the age where, you know, careers are starting to, you know, dwindle down. Um, really, I want to just continue writing because it's something I really, really enjoy. And you know, so, you know, that's basically what my goals for the future are, is to write and then be able to spend more time with my family, because working full-time has, you know, made it sometimes impossible to spend the time I've wanted to with my family. So, you know, those are my goals. Um, you know, and just, you know, there's no, nothing big, just, you know, just just goals to, to do finally the things that I would like to do and spend time with my family. Well, I think that's a good and important goal. So I'm glad. To when be did a you writer. realize you had uh I've written, you know, since I was in undergraduate school, but it's just been, you know, a couple of short stories here and a couple of little stories there. Um, I tried writing a screenplay and it didn't work out very well. Um, basically, because I didn't know how to do it, um, but I tried. But, um, you know, I just dabbled in writing for quite a while, and then I, I started just getting ideas about stories, and, you know, I started writing them down. And once I really put my mind to writing, that's when I knew that I just needed to be a writer. And, um, you know, I've, it, it's just, it's been a process, but it, it you know, it, took me a while to figure out that that's what I really wanted to do, is to write. So, and it's been, I guess, maybe 10, 12 years since, since then that you know, it's, it's been that I've wanted to be a writer. I know a lot of us can relate to that. 
And where is your favorite favorite place to write? Well, I, I would love to be able to write outside because I'm an outdoor person. I love to hear the birds. I love to sit underneath the trees and stuff like that. But unfortunately, we live next to a very, very noisy highway. So what I usually do is I write, if no one's home, I'll just sit on the couch. But I have a room in my house that I like to write in and I can, you know, it's got things around me that I like, you know, like a whole bunch of stuffed monkeys and stuff, you know, goofy things like that. But I can put on music that, that will help me help me concentrate you know I, I found yeah. that I, I can't put on ones with with um, words because I just start singing and that's not that's not pretty but <laughs> anyway but you know I'll put on music like I love the rainforest soundtracks and things like that because it makes me feel like I'm outside so but... I love that answer okay so how okay I really messed up that question when I wrote it um, how do you get your story ideas? Generally, they just they just come to me. You know, I'll just have an idea about something, and I'll think about it for a little while and see how I can, um, you know, make a story, a longer story out of it. Um, I don't really go looking for a story idea. Um, it's just something that occurs to me, and I'll I'll think about it for a little while and write down some notes and um, you know try to write a, just a basic outline, maybe a, a chapter or two, and see how it goes. Um, and then usually what I'll do is I'll just put it away for a little while and let it stew and then come back to it later, read what I've written and, and go from there. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, my idea is just, you know, it's just something that occurs to me that, that you know, that just some little storyline that, that might occur to me. And that's really where I get them from. Yeah, somebody will say something or you'll see something or just out of the blue. Yeah, exactly. I think it's called serendipity. <laughs> you write. And why are you trying to get some emotion out? Are you just wanting to please yourself? Or are you writing for the reader? Um, kind of all of them. I mean, I, I write what I like, um, what pleases me. Um, and I do write, you know, hopefully to give... Uh, the, the reader or something. Um, this book, this particular book, um, I would like to show the readers that there is a problem in this world and, you know, it's very likely that something could happen and if so, that people need to be prepared in one way or another, you know, to, to be able to make it on their own for a little bit. You know, you just, this world is crazy. And, you know, you just never know what's going to happen. I mean, and where I live, I mean, we get tornadoes, we get um, ice storms, you know, not a lot of them, but some ice storms in the winter, we get um, hurricanes, you know, we get pro a lot of weather-related emergencies, and there's times that we've had to spend, you know, five to seven days without electricity. And, you know, if you know, if you have food put back, if, if you have water, if you have a way to um, heat or cool yourself, if you have a way to um, to cook without electricity, you know, just to be able to take care of yourself for a, a little while is, you know, kind of what, you know, this So you have a message, but you want to get it out in an entertaining way. Yes. Okay. And our last question is, is there anything else you want to tell the viewers? Um, basically, everybody. I know that everybody has you know, dreams that, that they would like to do someday. You know, they may want to write, they may want to paint, they may want to learn to surf. You know, there's something that everybody has in their mind, in their heart, that they would like to do. Don't wait to do it. Just go ahead and start now. Don't wait because someday, in, in 
my opinion just never comes unless you just go ahead and do it. And, you know, just anything that you, that makes you happy, just go ahead and do. Don't, don't wait till you have the money. Don't wait till you have the time. Don't wait till your kids are out of school. Don't wait till you get that long vacation, you know, or whatever. Just go ahead, even if it's five minutes a day. Just, um, you know, go ahead and paint, go ahead and sing, go ahead and write, dance, whatever, garden, anything. Just go ahead and start and, you know, and do what you want in your heart during the times that you have um, available to you. I think that's great advice for everybody. Okay, we've come to the end of the interview. I really, 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 really want to say thank you for coming on and being my first interview. We've... Uh, message back and forth quite a while. It's great to finally see your face. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right. You have a good day. Ladies and gentlemen, Marty Thanks. Weaver. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. <laughs>